go in for I tell you how this thing came to my head. We had some relatives visiting from France one time. My your uncle. Un my uncle came from France to visit us, and right there, I, know, I what, was about ten years old, something like that. Something like that. I decided in my mind that we have to get out. You know how you get that feeling? You have to get out of here. That's that's when I got that feeling. Really. Uh, I left. Uh, I think it was November, first time, with Tommy, we made a dash for the border, which was about 200 miles or whatever, I don't know, 180. And we got, we just went on the back of a truck. It was a cold, a very cold winter too. And we were froze to death and I'm going outside, going on a highway. And anyway, make a long story short, we got, we got caught by the Hungarian border guards. Well, I was married to George for about six months, and during our courtship, he always talked about going to America. And I just let him talk because I knew it never gonna materialize. It was impossible that time even to think about going to America. But then in October 20th that year, <clears throat> there was the Hungarian Revolution and there was uh, the uprising and lots of fighting and the Russians came, Russian went, they came back again. And there was an opportunity we heard saying that nobody guarding the border and that it is free to go, whoever wants to try it. And of course he brought up the subject to go and I really didn't want to go, but there was a rumor going on that because of the Hungarian Revolution, all the young men gonna be taken to Siberia to the uh, uh, concentration camp or labor camp. And I didn't want this to happen. So when the opportunity came, we decided to leave Hungary. And it was just the two of us and some friends we paid off a, a truck driver who took us through the to the Austrian borders with all kind of, uh, kind of difficulties, but we arrived there and we were able to cross the border and ended up in Austria, uh, Austria the little town of Austria. I didn't say goodbye to them. Eva was already not living there, so I didn't say goodbye. It was just a big, long 10 years before I saw them again. I didn't say goodbye to Eva, and I don't remember really saying goodbye to, because it was a hustle bustle early in the morning that somebody's coming to pick them up or they're going to the trains. I was only 10 years old, I don't know. I don't know. You know, when we said goodbye a night before we left, we really didn't think it's going to work. Somehow I didn't believe that we're going to be able to escape. And my parents, especially my father, didn't really believe that, that we're going to leave. And the next day when we went out to the meeting place, we had to wait till the truck driver came. I, I had the opportunity to go back and really say goodbye to my mother, but George wouldn't let off my hand because he knew if I go back, I would not have the courage to leave. So, so then we stayed and waited for the truck driver. And it was difficult because during our trip, um, there was a lot of people hiding behind clothes. And then the Russians stopped us on the way. And sometimes they, they put through the bayonets trying to find out if anybody hiding under the clothes, but somehow we were lucky and he didn't get us. And so we reached the border in about eight, 10 hours drive. Oh, they left me. 1956, I remember I was 10 years old when Tommy and George left. And they were talking about the shoes they're gonna wear that was brand new and they might hurt their feet. And that, 
vaguely remembered that. And then they left, and it took a long time, maybe two weeks, until we heard from them. We were listening to the radio. We went over to my uncle's house with a big radio, and we were listening to, uh, what was it, BBC. And we were waiting so, because when they went to Austria, these people sent some messages, some nicknames, some, some, we were waiting for something to hear. We didn't really hear anything from the radio. We were very anxious to hear because we didn't know what happened to them. And then uh, I think my mother heard that George and Tommy, they found Eva. And then they were all together, and all ten of them were together, including my uncle. At first I tried with George Mendel, and I, we were caught. And I don't know if George talked about that, but um, it was very excited. And um, anyway, we came back, and I seen my mother, and I said, I can't do it anymore with her. She was all broken up, so I said, okay, I'm not going. And I used to have a card game with my friends, and by that time the revolution practically was over, but still people were dying on the street. And I had an um, argument with my very, very closest friend, I had the, the card game, and uh, we disagreed on, I said that I don't think any life is worth to be what is middle of a flag. The Russian emblem or the Hungarian emblem, I felt that's not that important for a young person's life. And he said, you think because Jewish. And that's, that's made me angry, I get up from the car table, and I went home, I told the story to my dad and to my mom, and I said, I'm sorry, I would like to go. And that time my dad said to, to George, go with him because otherwise he's going to be in trouble. And George says, okay, but I'm going for one reason only, to bring back everybody. So. Next day, we got on the train, and uh, when we got, we felt we are very close to the border. We, the train kind of slowed down, and George and I jumped off the train and went into a farmer's house, and we told them that it's any way he can direct us to which way is the border, and he said, if we wait until middle of the night, I have a group already ready to go. When it's dark, you can come, and it costs you 20,000 forint a piece. And we said, we don't have any money, which was true, because we were afraid if we get caught, the first thing they're going to take away is the money. So we didn't have money, but he had a brass ring on his finger. So the guy said that, um, okay, you can carry all the kids in the group and you give me your ring. So George took off his ring. He didn't know it was brass. He wanted the ring, so he got a ring. No question asked. He didn't ask how many carat was. And um, he got a 